Today the cheap will spotlight the all new Unity UT123. Let's take a look. Lately Unity has one heck of a batting average right now out of the ballpark really because they've come out with some great meters in a short period of time. Well, here's another one to add to that addition. It is small, sexy, and oh so red. No, it's not my car. This unit has only been out for about a month now, so it is definitely brand new as far as digital multimeters go. Now, as you can see, it is pretty sparse in terms of overall functionality, but let's hope that what it does offer, it does a good job at. Let's find out. So this cool looking little multimeter from Unity shipped in a nice case. Always a bonus, always a plus. Definitely um, kudos for that. What do you get in the case? Well, let's take a peek. First of all, we do have a thermocouple because yes, it does do temperature. And guess what? In both Celsius and Fahrenheit, my American friends, yeehaw, or good job. Also ships with a really nice set of Unity probes. Now, I must admit, as of late, I find the quality has definitely gone up in terms of those generic type probes coming out from Unity. These are a definite step in the right direction. They feel better. Um, they just overall have a, a higher quality feel to them. And we're definitely gonna be using these for the testing. The one, two, three is a tiny meter. It is right on par with these other guys from Rich Meters. Here we have the 403B, the 408B. And as you can see, it is really the same size. And these are small meters. Now, um, we stack them up side by side. You'll see that even the width of the meter is basically right on par. So definitely small, definitely something you can throw in that glove compartment or toolbox or heck, even your The great thing about Unity as of late is the fact that their multimeters are definitely unique, both in style and presentation and functionality and that is a good thing nothing like having 10 meters that are all the same no unity definitely thinks out of the box and hey as an end user i appreciate this a lot and once again no difference here with the one two three hey i gotta love that name one two three it is so easy to remember so it's quite unique in both the look and um, overall ergonomics of it as you can see it has a slightly tapered look i'm not going to say it has that cell phone look but it's probably um, more along that lines than maybe your typical multimeter just because it does have that nice kind of beveled corpus or body it just gives it a really nice form factor which I like let's take a closer look taking a closer look now at the actual functionality of the meter you will notice right away it does not do current not even milliamps so if you're looking for current look no further yes you'll have to pass on this one but if current is not of a necessity or if you already have a meter that does current then hey let's take a closer look so we're no input jack whatsoever no milliamp jack no high current no microamp nada instead we have our common here on the left and on the right the bolt resistance uh, continuity and temperature that's it folks that's all it's really basic starting off the 10 o'clock position we have the off Volts AC DC, continuity and resistance, temperature in both Celsius and Fahrenheit. Finally, non contact voltage. At the top, we have two soft touch buttons. On the left, we have the select, and on the right, your basic touch hold. Unfortunately, the 123 has no back stand. That's right, no tilting bail, no stand whatsoever. Oh, why Unity, why didn't you give us a stand? Ugh. It does have one of these little crevices here at the top, so you could put a uh, holder on if you're so inclined, but yeah, just no stand. This is the battery compartment here. It has one Phillips screw. We'll take a closer look at that shortly, but uh, it does look like it comes up and holds as a stand, but no, no can do, nada. No stand. I give you a stand. Actually, Michael Yamberino, one of my fantastic subscribers out there, built this, customized it, and sent it, to, sent it to me and said, Hey, Darren, whenever you're using a multimeter that doesn't have a tilting bail, please think of me. And, Mike, I am thinking of you right now. Boy, am I thinking of you. Thanks a million. Actually, he didn't say it quite like that, but you get the general idea. So without further ado, let us introduce the 123 to this awesome little device. And by the way, I will put a link to uh, Mike's stand to a, a video he actually did on YouTube at the bottom of this video. 
Without further ado, let's turn on the UT123. And look at that gorgeous EBTN screen. Gotta love it. Yeah, so we're not looking at your standard LCD display anymore. No, UT has taken it up a notch. And we're looking at the nice EBTN display. And you know what? I really like the way it looks. Um, it has a very nice, robust kind of a... Uh, I don't know how, how to describe it, but it just... For me, it's just super easy on the eyes. And I like it. I like it. Now, when I turned it on, you may or may not have noticed something. In fact, I'm going to turn it off and turn it back on again because something really unique, and this is what I mean about thinking out of the box, what Unity has done with this meter is they've done a booting status. So when you turn on the meter for the first time, the green light that you will see at the top is actually a battery indicator, giving you a status of how good or bad that battery is. When it's green, it's basically in a normal state. Yellow will indicate low battery. So yeah, when it's yellow, time to change it. And when it's red, low battery, don't even worry. I mean, don't even use it. Change that battery. So let's turn it on and there you can see. So that green status indicator told us that the battery is good. Hey, bravo, Unity, so simple, but really nice. Something else about the EPTN display that I like is the fact that it doesn't really matter what angle you look at it, it's always clear. So that's one of the definite benefits of EBTN display is the fact that it is really angle independent. Hey, hey, whoa, 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 not so close. Whew, got a little nervous there. The one, two, three has a maximum of 600 volts on the AC DC and the resistance range, it goes up to 20 mega ohm. And as well, we have our temperature Celsius and Fahrenheit. Now, now when Unity made the 123, they definitely did take out a couple of things that we are used to in the multimeter world. By that, I'm talking about not only the current mode, which is gone, no current whatsoever, but there's also an absence of, you got it, capacitance. No, we can't do capacitors. It doesn't exist for the 123, as well as dialed mode. So yeah, we can't even test a dial with the one, two, three. That's too bad. You know, I could live without the capacitance, but geez, it would have been nice to have that dialed capability, but oh well, it is what it is. So Unity once again has added a little bit of sizzle with this meter, and that is because it does do auto detection of voltage. That is correct. So it will discern on its own whether or not it is AC or DC that you are testing. Good job, Unity. I love this kind of sizzle. Right now you can see we are in AC mode. That doesn't stand for air conditioning. Wow, it's been hot, hasn't it guys? The red lead onto the voltage tester and voila, it discerns that now we are in DC mode. Correct, and look at that, 250 millivolts, spot on. Let's try the same thing now. We're gonna hopefully see 2.5 volts There we go, 2.508 volts. Remember, this is a 4,000 count meter. So right now we have that extra digit of resolution. Good stuff, one, two, three. All right, we're gonna try AC mode now. I'm gonna stick it into your standard household. And we have that high voltage indicator, 120 volts is what we have over here. And spot on. Gosh, I'm having fun, guys. I, guess I just love these cheap old multimeters. Just gives me goosebumps already. Next up is resistance mode, and we are sitting at nine mega ohms, and look at that spot on 9.00. What a fantastic little meter. Now, one thing worth pointing out is when you are switching ranges, it will default first off to continuity. So you're gonna hit that select switch once to bring it into ohms mode and yeah spot on nine mega ohm okay let's take it down eight mega ohm seven six five four three there's that extra digit resolution coming up now two and one mega ohm hey look at that no worries spot on Next up is continuity. And I gotta say, I'm in love with these probes. I mean, wow, you know, they feel good. It, it, it's, it's PVC, it's not silicone, but you know what? Wow, Unity, keep up the good work. Uh, I, I'm not brown nosing, I just can't get over how good their probes are as of late with these cheapo meters. I'm loving it, loving it. 
Okay, so we're gonna start off with the stock probes. We're in continuity mode. Actually, we're not. We are now. Here we go. Now you can see we have that visual indicator at the top. Let me just zoom out a bit. Excellent. Gotta love it. You gotta love it. Now it is a little, I'd probably say on the low side, we'll find out how many decibels exactly in a minute. But um, we have that visual indicator, which is a huge bonus. Let's try the Probe Masters. Already got the Probe Masters out. Here we go. Oh my gosh. Wow. Beautiful. God, what am I doing? So fantastic, fantastic. 10 out of 10. Um, latched. I wish it was just a little bit louder, but it is still fairly loud. And hey, we have a visual indicator as well. Awesome. Sixty-three point five decibels is the maximum decibel output for the UT one two three. One of the nice things about fast continuity is the fact that yeah, you know, you don't always have time to take your sweet little dooly daddle or dilly daddle or dilly daddle daddle dilly. You know what I'm trying to say. Sometimes you just have to do things fast. So, so I'm just swiping apart this IC. No problem. Nice fast continuity. Currently in temperature mode. Now there is no ambient temperature testing with the one, two, three. You do need that thermal probe or thermocouple in order to measure your temperature. Nothing on board, no onboard sensor. You need the thermocouple. Defaults to Celsius. If you want your Fahrenheit, hit the select switch and Fahrenheit it is. And as you can see, it is a balmy 63 degrees Fahrenheit in my lab. It's cold in here. Now, just for comparison's sake, I brought in a few different um, meters into the equation. And the triplet on the right is showing us uh, 70, 71 degrees Fahrenheit. The uh, 123 is giving us around 64 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're showing 68 with the um, infrared thermometer. So all pretty well in the same ballpark, but it's possible that the unity is out by a couple of degrees. Finally, we're in NCV or non-contact voltage mode. Remember, there's three different criteria. According to this multimeter, you've got the yellow, the amber, and the red. Let's see what the 123 has to say about that. And yes, indeed, no worries there. Works like a charm, and it is definitely high voltage. Good gosh, I just realized I've been doing the review without taking off the protective tape. Oh, it's on there so good I didn't even notice it. All right, there we go. Sorry about that, folks. Yeah, very sweet screen, as you can tell. Very, very nice. So we are in high voltage mode. Let's see if the 123 has any issues. We're gonna take it up to at least 600 volts. Put on the safety goggles. Here we go. Have that over limit with the high voltage indicator in the top left. No worries there. Let's try that one more time. Good to go. Good stuff. Current consumption on the Unity UT123 is approximately 14 milliamps. So you should get roughly about 50 hours of battery life on these two AAAs. Something else worth pointing out as well is the selector switch has a really nice feel. Clackety clack, clickety click. Um, does not get stuck in between ranges. Yeah, I know there's not a whole lot of ranges to get stuck in, but that being said, very nice. All right, let's take a look at the inside, starting off with battery compartment. There we go. One nice threaded insert, and as simple as that, access to two AAA batteries. Bada boom, bada bing, bada bang, and there we go. Taking a look at the interior back of the chassis 
And as you can tell, yeah, no surprise once again, no shielding. Come on, guys, get with the program. A little bit of shielding goes a long way. Ah. Taking a look at the inside, starting at the bottom with the input jacks, they are decently soldered. They go right through the PCB and they are of the split variety. And once again, they have that added support via the back of the chassis with those two extrusions. Moving down the line, we see one PTC for the voltage side of things. And uh, we have a transistor clamp over there, moving up a bit. Nice big piezo speaker. Now, surprisingly, this was a little bit on the low sound in the side, um, despite the uh, enormity of that piezo. Look at the fab date. We've got August 2018, UT123, and it is a revision one because it is a brand new meter. We have the battery contacts over here for those triple A's. Here in the middle of the NCV detection, we see a diode, and that is what is giving us that really nice visual continuity and NCV indicator. Other than that, as you can see, it's pretty clean, pretty sparse. There's a lot of room left on this PCB. Those vias are few and far between. NCV itself, right at the top, it is embedded into the PCB, and it looks decent. Starting things off on the other side, we have the selector switch, which is, by the way, really nicely green. It makes contact with the actual rotary selector, which we'll take a look at now. There it is in all of its glory, and boy is it tiny. Look at that. So we have very few tracks here. The off, the voltage, resistance, temperature, and NCV, and they've actually labeled those pads. So really minute, very, very tiny. Um, as I said, pretty slim pickings in terms of the overall functionality, but um, nonetheless. Once again, the opposite side of the uh, input jacks, you can tell they are really nicely soldered. They go all the way through, and yeah, good job Unity, I like what I see. Now if we look at the top end, here we have the two push buttons, the hold and the select. And here is that gorgeous EPTN display, nicely uh, surrounded by a glass partition. So all in all, I think there's some pretty good longevity with this meter in terms of display life. It's gonna be really hard to uh, mess this thing up. Speaker as well over here, and once again, the opposite side of that non-contact voltage, um, which was quite good in terms of the overall detection. Okay, I'm going to wrap things up, put it back together, come back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the Unity UT123. This is a great multimeter. Yeah, it is a cheap old multimeter. I paid about 18 bucks Canadian for this and it is major bang for the buck. Okay, it doesn't do current. It doesn't do capacitance. Oh, I know it doesn't even do diode testing, but dang it, what it does do, it doesn't do it really well. Try saying that three times fast. But you know what, at the end of the day, what matters most is, is this meter gonna last? Is it gonna perform? And is it value for the dollar? And it's yes to all of the above and more. It's got a great looking EBTN display, 4,000 counts, and this thing is a little, little dynamo. I love it, highly recommend it. If you're a Unity fan, you gotta get it. The UT123 gets a solid, four out of five stars. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Till the next time, keep on testing.